Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today is July 1st, the first day of residency for many new graduates out there and maybe the first day of private practice for those graduating from residency. It also may mark the beginning of a new semester or a summer vacation. I figured now would be the perfect time to review some basics in my latest installment of my PATH 101 series on how to properly describe soft tissue lesions. But first, we have to get into that disclaimer, and that is that all opinions expressed in this video are mine and mine alone, and do not represent any organization that may employ me or that I may belong to, and that this video is for educational purposes only and should not serve as medical advice. Should you have any questions or concerns about your oral or systemic health, please see your nearest oral or systemic health care provider. And with all that being said, let's get into today's video. I want to thank viewer Roslyn for suggesting the topic for this video. If you have any suggestions for what you'd like to see in a future video, leave it as a comment down below. I'm always trying to come up with new and relevant topics and always appreciate any input that you can provide. When I was a dental student learning how to describe soft tissue lesions, my instructor, Dr. Chris Harrington, put it in a way that has always stuck with me and I now use the same viewpoint when teaching my own students. If you see something in your practice and you were to call me on the phone or write me an email, would I be able to paint a picture in my head as to what the lesion looks like? It's important to be as specific and descriptive as possible when describing a lesion to make sure that you're painting an accurate picture both for consult purposes and for your own records. When describing a lesion, you wanna think about its location, size, color, and shape. These are the most important descriptors and every clinical description should include at least all four of these categories. Change over time and symptoms are also helpful, but this information may not be available at the time of the exam. First, location. It's important to be as specific as possible when describing a lesion's location. Name the exact anatomic site and the site in which you see it. It's also important to note if there's only one, which we would call focal or unifocal, or if there are multiple lesions in multiple sites, which we would call multifocal. If a lesion is multifocal, we should make note of all of the sites in which it appears. Next is the size. We want to make sure we avoid adjectives such as small and large. These are relative terms. Small compared to what, exactly? Instead, we want to report size in specific ways. The first way is that you could measure it. You can use a periodontal probe or a ruler to measure the exact size of the lesion. If you don't have one of these tools handy, you can describe the extent. For example, you may state that this lesion extends from the mesial of the right mandibular central incisor to the mesial of the right mandibular canine involving the marginal gingiva and extending to at least 90% of the height of the incisor. That would be a very descriptive way to discuss this lesion's size. Next is color, and this is as easy as it sounds. Is it pink? purple, red, or blue? There are a few different terms we'll review to elevate this category and take it to the next level, but it often combines the next category, which is shape. There are a lot of specific terms that we can use to describe a lesion's shape. We'll start with a flat lesion and work our way up to a more elevated lesion. A flat lesion with color change is called a macule. This is an example of a melanotic macule. There's no surface change, but there is a focal area of color change. When blood is involved, we have specific terms we can use. A small pinpoint area of flat red bleeding is called petechia. A larger area of bleeding is called ecchymosis, which is very similar to a bruise and may either be red or could be blue or purple or even yellow, depending on the stage of healing. An area of depression where the epithelium and often part of the underlying connective tissue is lost, is called an ulceration. Ulcers often appear yellow. This is because the initial stage of healing involves creating what is called a fibropurulent membrane. This membrane consists of fibrin and acute inflammation or neutrophils. Neutrophils are what comprise purulent exudate or pus, which is why this membrane looks yellow. Going the opposite direction, we'll discuss elevated lesions or lesions that rise above the surrounding surface. 
a lesion that is only slightly elevated above the surface that is flat on top is called a plaque. These are often sharply demarcated from the surrounding tissue, so much so that you could use a mental pencil to trace its outline. We can create a descriptive term for different colored plaques. A white plaque is called a leukoplakia, where leuco is a prefix meaning white and plakia refers to the slightly raised plaque. An erythroplakia refers to a red plaque and an erythroleukoplakia, or a so-called speckled leukoplakia, is a combo red and white plaque. Extending further above the surface, a papule is a raised lesion that is less than five millimeters, while a nodule is a raised lesion that is more than five millimeters. In addition to size, we also like to describe lesions based on their architecture. We use the word sessile when the growth is wider at the base than at the top, and pedunculated when the growth is wider at the top than at the base. These are often on a stalk similar to a tree. For the millennials like myself or Gen Zers watching, I like to make the analogy using the popular Nickelodeon TV show SpongeBob SquarePants. Think of Patrick Starfish's house as sessile, while SpongeBob's pineapple house is pedunculated. And if you aren't familiar with SpongeBob, then you must be living under a rock. <laughs> anyway, finally, we have our fluid filled lesions, and fluid filled lesions are described as fluctuant. A small five millimeter or less fluctuant fluid filled lesion is called a vesicle. A fluid filled lesion greater than five millimeters is a bulla. A pustule is a specific type of fluid filled lesion that is filled with purulent exudate or pus. Just like the ulcer membrane, this is usually yellow in color as well. So there you have it. That concludes our quick overview of how to describe soft tissue lesions. There are certainly other considerations and terms we didn't cover, and we didn't even begin to discuss radiographic descriptors. But hopefully this served as a nice refresher or a helpful crash course to prepare you. Thanks again to Rosalind for suggesting this topic. Don't be afraid to offer up your own topic suggestion in the comments below. And while you're down there, tap that like button. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks again for watching and be well.